the Paracave Podcast, proudly brought to you by major sponsor Jack's Pale Ale, exclusively available at Paramount Leash Club, Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty, BT ZD Clothing, and the official media partner of the Paracave Podcast, the Parramatta Times. Welcome to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. And now over to your host, Troy Warner, broadcasting live from the world-famous Paracave. And yes, hello and welcome back to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. Troy Warner here, and I didn't get the opportunity to talk to the Duckman on Pulse FM 89.9 FM due to himself commentating for a few football New South Wales games today. So we didn't have a chat live on the radio like we usually do on a Friday and a Sunday night. The Friday night is usually a preview of the round and the Sunday night is usually a review of the round. So I thought I would give it a crack by myself and see how this goes and see if you guys, the listeners, like my uh, review of round number 10 in the NRL. Now, that all, and what a round it was. It was a major round for injuries, and a major injury occurred in this first game that happened on Thursday, Thursday night. On In round 10, the Dolphins took on the Sea Eagles at Suncorp Stadium in front of 14,000 fans. And the Dolphins got the win, 30 points to 24. But the major talking point out of this game was the injury to Tom Travojevic, a hamstring injury, I believe. And that is going to possibly keep him out for about seven to eight weeks, which is going to keep him out of Origin 1, potentially Origin 2 as well. And a massive blow for the Manly Sea Eagles, as we all know, that Tom is at a integral part of the Sea Eagles team and like any integral part of a team, if that integral part is not playing, then it can be very difficult. We've already seen that in the, uh, especially my team with Mitchell Moses being out for an extended period and now Clint Gutherson out for a extended period as well. So we've already seen that this year and look, it can create opportunities for younger players in a side or also experienced players to step up as well and we will have to wait and see what happens in for the Sea Eagles in Magic Round against the Broncos next week. But this is a cruel blow for the Sea Eagles and also New South Wales as well. But to this game, look, the Dolphins, they are playing some really great footy at the moment and they sit fourth on the ladder and they are just... It's unbelievable the way that they are playing at the moment. They are getting the wins. They have players, major players, out of the out of their side. Uh, thankfully, Herbie Farnworth came back to this team this week, so that was a big inclusion to the Dolphins side. And look, Trey Fuller back at fullback there. He has been an outstanding fullback for the Dolphins in the place of Hamaso Tabuai Fado, who is probably due back next week. So you would like to think that there could be a spot for Trey in this side somewhere because we can all see what he can do. And something like scoring a try like he did, it was a bit of a chip and chase try. It was great vision by Trey to get across the line. Uh, and that's the sort of play you want to see in the NRL. And look, Wayne Bennett, he's doing a great job up there at the Dolphins. 
Tom Flegler is out. Herbie Farnworth was out, but he is back now. And, look, he's got some big injuries there. And, look, one player that is certainly standing up for the Dolphins as well is a young player, Isaiah Katoa. And he came from the Penrith Panthers, so they just continue to pump out juniors left right and center but now he is the halfback up at the Dolphins and look he's leading this team around really well playing some great footy at the moment some people have mentioned with this injury crisis that is going on at the moment for New South Wales potentially a massive smoky to get into that origin side I Cannot see that happening at the moment, but hey, it it is origin, you never know, and the Dolphins are playing some great footy. So, look, this game was going up and down in the way of scoring here and there, and look, it was 20 to points to 16 at half time, so it was still anybody's game. And look, after half time, Tom Travojevic scores a try, and you thought maybe that they get back into the lead. And 22-20, I believe it was. And you thought maybe they might hang on. But then the the Dolphins, they got a try to Jack Bostock. And I think that's when Tommy T did his injury as he was trying to tackle Jack and rolled into touch and took out a cameraman, I think it was, on the sideline. And I think that's when the injury occurred there. And look, the Dolphins went on to win. They scored five tries to four. And as I said, congratulations to the Dolphins. Fourth on the ladder at the moment. The Sea Eagles, they still are in the eight, just by one point at this point in time. Now, the next game that was played was, I didn't see much of this game as I was at Combank Stadium waiting for the next game that I'll talk about, but I have seen highlights of this game and it was the Panthers versus the Bulldogs at Bluebet Stadium. The Panthers won that one 16 points to 10. Now, there was a return of some of the Bulldogs players to Bluebet Stadium Obviously, the biggest name returning back there was Steve Crichton, playing against some of his old teammates and mates now. Uh, Matt Burton, he's played the Panthers a couple of times now. Jamin Salmon as well. And look, these these Bulldogs, they as, I, as I've said before in tipping podcasts, they are probably the most improved side in this competition at the moment. They sit in ninth position, just out of the eight. And look, they are playing some great footy at the moment. They're not getting the wins in these close games, but previous games against the Panthers, they got smashed. So look, they showed a really good showing against the Panthers on Friday night. And at 12 nil at half time you thought that the Panthers were well in control and you thought that they could possibly go on with it at half time the Bulldogs they fought back to tries to Jacob Kiraz and Matt Burton Matt Burton converting full fell short 16 points to 10 um in front of a good crowd of 21,525 on a rainy old night as well But the big news to come out of this game was Nathan Cleary and another hamstring injury to Nathan. And look, that's bad news for the Panthers and also New South Wales origin. So New South, he would have been the first player picked, in my opinion, at halfback. And look, so New South Wales Origin, two players missing now that will probably miss the Origin series. Nathan Cleary and Tom Travojevic, so uh, that is not good news for New South Wales and obviously the Panthers as well. We've seen Brad Schneider step up and take that halfback position while Nathan has been out previously this year. Unfortunately, Brad suffered an injury in the New South Wales Cup game and is likely to be missing three to four weeks. And so it more than likely will see Jerome Luai maybe go to number seven or Jack Cole go to number seven um, in the halves there. Jack obviously played in the World Club Challenge uh, earlier on this year against Wigan. So 
that will probably be the combination while Brad Schneider is out and Nathan is looking at about seven to eight weeks on the sidelines. So recovery there for him. Now, there has been a little bit of talk of him going to America, I think, but I think maybe the Panthers, they might have the right rehab uh, team in place uh, to look after Nathan, but... You never know. Uh, He may go over to America, and uh, I can't recall the trainer or doctor's name over there that I think Latrell's been to. Uh, Caelan Ponga, I think, went to Canada, I think, by memory. Um, But more than likely, he'll stay at home, I guess, and uh, recuperate and try and get this injury right and come back for the Panthers in about round 19, 20, uh, later on in the season. So, look, the Panthers, they have these young players who step up. They've got that next man up mentality. So, look, it may be a a couple of weeks that they do struggle a little bit, maybe, uh, just without Nathan. Um, But they are playing another team that is struggling at the moment, which we'll get to later, the Warriors in Magic Round next week. So... They are in second place on the ladder, the Panthers, and they are banking the wins at the moment. So that is a good thing for them, obviously, Uh, with the State of Origin period coming up where they will have a couple of players featured in the New South Wales side. Liam Martin, Isaiah Yo, Brian To'o, just to name a couple, potentially Jerome Luai. Um, So whilst they can bank these wins whilst it's not origin and also whilst nathan is out that is always a good thing so next week will be interesting to see how they go but the panthers they got that win 16 points to 10 over the bulldogs but look the bulldogs don't uh, underestimate them they are as i said the most improving side of 2024 and uh look they weren't far off being the premiers on to the next game, and I was at this game at Combank Stadium. It was the Eels taking on the Broncos, which the Broncos won 30 points to 14. Uh, crowd attendance of 17,393. Now, there will be a in-depth game uh, review of this game for myself, Troy's Take. So stay tuned for that one. That one will probably come out tomorrow, Monday, I dare say. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, But a little bit here for those who may not want to listen to that. I hope you do. But uh, for those who may not want to listen to that, the Eels, look, in my opinion, this was probably a most improved performance from them Uh, obviously Mitch Moses still out there is talk that he will be back for magic round if not the round after so he was still out Uh, and Clint Gutherson was out as well that news came through last week that he'll be out for four to five weeks as well both were at the game uh, and on the field pre pre pre-game in the warm-up just encouraging the team and it was great to see them there. Uh, Blaze Talagi, he had a great game uh, for the Eels. Ran for over 200 metres, scored a try, almost a double. It was disallowed due to an obstruction. Um, so almost a double. I nearly picked that one if you stayed with my tips of this game via the Talking Para podcast. Uh, but he had a great game, I thought. I thought Bailey Simonson had a good game as well. Uh, Dylan Brown, he tried hard. He had many a run. Um, look, I don't really know who the pick of the forwards was. Uh, it was very hard to say. Joe Offerhangawi started the game again, and Junior Paolo was on the interchange bench. Brendan Hands, he didn't have the impact I thought he would. Um, so, yeah, I can't really say for the Eels forwards who had a good game. Jermaine Hopgood, he was okay. Um, but, yeah, for my pick, uh, 
of the Eels there, uh, Blaze was probably the man of the match for them. Uh, Bailey Simonson as well, Dylan Brown. Look, for the Broncos, look, they scored, I think it was three tries um, that potentially, look, two tries were off Eels' mistakes and they were length of the field jobs. They do have a lot of pace in their side. Ezra Mam, he picked up one one ball and then passed it off to Reese Walsh for the Broncos' first try, the first try of the game. Uh, basically ran 80 metres and scored. Uh, Dean Mariner, he got a double. I think his first try, Michael Sivo, came in and jammed in and obviously the Broncos got the ball away out to Dean and his speed. He managed to get around Sean Russell and step Blaze Talangi at fullback and scored. His second try, I think, was off an Eels error where they just passed the ball to him right on half time as well. Uh, I think the ball, the Eels were shifting the ball out to the left hand side. They uh, unfortunately dropped the ball. I forget who picked it up. Uh, Jordan Ricky, I think it was, and just got it off to Dean Mariner. And he practically ran 70 odd. 75 odd metres and scored Ezra Mam, he scored a try it was a chip and chase try so look I always love seeing chip and chase tries in rugby league but this was eyes up footy and it was great to see Ezra see that he obviously saw Blaze up in the line or just just behind the line and He managed to chip over the top. Blaze unfortunately slipped, and Ezra got the ball and scored. Selwyn Cobbo's try, look, that was a try that, look, only probably Brisbane could score, I guess. Um, Reese Walsh put a grubber kick, went through Joey Lussick's legs, and then uh, I think the Eels player missed it, and a Broncos player missed it, but then Selwyn... Just got it just before the dead ball line and put it down. So, look, uh, was it two two tries off Eels' mistakes? A try that probably was very lucky to score, I guess, the Selwyn Cobbo one because it, it could have bounced one more time and gone over the dead ball line. Um, and the Ezra Man one, well, that was just, I guess, Blaze being in a position. So, look, as I said, the Eels are more improved performance from them. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't get the win, though. The Broncos, they march on as well. They move up to sixth spot on the ladder and eyeing off a top four spot taking on the Manly Sea Eagles in Magic Round as the away team, as they normally do every single year. So a bit of a home game for the Broncos, but they're usually the away team there uh, every year. So they are marching forward. Now, the next game was Super Saturday, and it started off in Tamworth. The West Tigers taking on the Newcastle Knights. Now, this was a... Sold out crowd. There was a bit of a rain about there up at Tamworth, but the crowd just kept on turning up there. Look, it was only 8 6 at half time, so it was still anybody's game. Isaiah Papali, he got a double in this game. Uh, the Newcastle Knights, they won the game 20 points to 14. The Tigers, they were in this game for a long period, um, but the Newcastle Knights, they managed to grind out a victory and get the win. And look, the Newcastle Knights, they have had a couple of wins in a row now, so they're getting a little bit of confidence. They've moved up to 10th position on the ladder on 10 points, uh, just one point out of the eight. So they are looking not too bad. And... Uh, David Armstrong at fullback, he has been a revelation since Caelan Ponga has been out. He scored another try just after half time, which probably gave the ascendancy to the Newcastle Knights. And look, since caelan has been out, as I said, he's been uh, one of Newcastle's shining lights and he will c- continue to play that fullback role whilst Caelan is out for sure. 
Uh, Bradman Best, he scored a try as well, and he is pushing his claims to get a origin berth as well. He got a a run last year for New South Wales in Game 3 of last year's series, so he is one of the incumbent centres for New South Wales, so scoring a try on the weekend wouldn't do them wouldn't do his chances any harm at all. Uh, one of the sneaky plays of the game, if you have seen it on social media, was Alex Twell uh, getting the sticky spray from the Newcastle trainer at one point, spraying his hands, bit on the jersey, and then putting it back in the trainer's, I guess you could call it bum bagish belt sort of thing. So, um, it's very sneaky play there from Alex Twell. It's very funny. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's all over social media. Uh, very funny, smart play there. But the Tigers, look, they remain in 15th position. And look, They've been unlucky and lucky, or mostly unlucky in games. A few controversial calls against them. There wasn't any this weekend, I don't think, from memory. Um, But they just didn't get the win. So, unfortunately, the next game was the Dragons taking on the Rabbitohs. And this saw the return of Latrell Mitchell after a three-week suspension. So... Uh, South had a bye in that time as well, so a month out of footy for Latrell. So he was obviously looking forward to coming back. The team was looking forward to seeing him back, as, as was the fans as well. Uh, unfortunately for Latrell, he did score two tries in the game, although he did make a couple of errors at the back there, which led to uh, St. George tries. So... Uh, Maybe not so much the return that Latrell would have liked, uh, but I guess it is good to see him back on the field, especially South Sydney. They need him now uh, there on the field with the injury crisis that they have as well. Um, and so it was good to see him back. Uh, 12-6 at half time. the Dragons went in to half time in the lead and managed to put 16 points on in the second half. Now, an unusual stat for the Rabbitohs is it is the eighth time this season that they have had 28 points or more put on them. I think that's an NRL or rugby league record uh, in the first nine games of the season. So, or f- their first nine games of the season. Uh, so, the Dragons added that record to them. And then, look, under new coach Shane Flanagan, they're playing some good footy. They haven't had uh, a lot of wins, but they do see themselves at the, you know, where above where I think they would think they would be. They're up to 11th position on the ladder. Uh, five wins th- for the season. Uh, next week they've got the bye magic round, so another two points there. So uh, if the Sea Eagles, Bulldogs, Knights lose, they find themselves in the eight. So that would be a remarkable story there. Um, they're playing some great footy under coach Shane Flanagan, um, and he's just brought a different style to the game. And I think this is a good thing for the Dragons. They're still finding their feet. They can have the big loss here and there, uh, but they can grind out a win and they can they can score points as well. Uh, this one being played at Cogra Oval, the traditional home of the Dragons. So Zach Lomax, he got another two-point field goal as well. He got one against the Warriors down there in Wollongong, this time at Cogra, just before half-time. Um, and, look, Eels fans, they'll be wanting him to hopefully have the opportunity next year, maybe, if it comes up, to kick one of those field goals. A handy acquisition, that's for sure. And, uh, look, as I said, 
he scored a try as well. Three out of four, two penalty goals. So his goal kicking is not too bad as well. Um, so a good game for Zach Lomax. And he could potentially be pushing for a New South Wales origin spot. Uh, he certainly has been one of the form players of the competition. Had a bit of an off week last week. Uh, but... Um, yeah, certainly had a great game this week. The last game of Super Saturday saw the Storm take on the Sharks down there at Amy Park in Melbourne. This was one versus two. The Sharks on top of the ladder, the Storm on sec- in second position. And look, this game was built as the game of the round. It was built as a big test for the Sharks. A lot of people saying they hadn't played anyone of decency, although every team in the NRL is decent in some sort of way. So you still have to play those teams in front of you to get the two points. Uh, But this was their first big test. And uh, next week they've got another test, I think, against the Roosters. And then... They have they got the Roosters in Magic Round, and I believe they have the Panthers after that. So a tough couple of weeks for them and some big games coming up. But this one, they won 25 points to 18 in front of a fair crowd. Um, Melbourne, they scored the first try through Eli Katoa, and it was a great try too. And uh, look, the most... It was 12 all at half time. The most controversial point to come out of this game was the Harry Grant sin binning. Now, we have seen during the year contact with legs of a kicker has led to sin binnings, has led to suspensions, has led to a team kicking a goal and getting back into the game uh, to go to golden point. Now, What are your thoughts on this sin binning of Harry Grant? For me, it definitely, it probably could have given a penalty. It definitely wasn't a sin bin. Look, he wasn't even looking at the time. Um, He wasn't even going for the ball at the time. He sort of, he sort of turned his body and Atkinson, Daniel Atkinson, who had a massive game as well for the Sharks. He kicked four out of four goals and the field goal as well to get the Sharkies in front by one point when it was 18 all. So he got them to 19-18 in the 73rd minute. But, yeah, for me, definitely not a sin bin. Maybe a penalty. Uh, but this rule is really a black on or it's a bit of a gray one i think because sometimes you see as i said a penalty in a sin bin sometimes you see a penalty um sometimes you don't see any penalty or any action at all there was one scott drinkwater and cody nicarima cody just just touched the leg of scott drinkwater whilst he was going for a field goal um scott didn't go on about it or anything like that so um, it probably didn't uh, get noticed I guess and nothing was done about it so look it is a bit of a grey one at the moment I think the way that the NRL are policing it is if you touch the leg of a kicker whilst they're kicking in any fashion then you're going to get a penalty Uh, the kicking team's going to get a penalty and look they've set the standard now haven't they that uh, Harry Grant got sin bin and so I guess that means that any player that touches the leg of a kicker not only gets 10 minutes in the sin bin but the team gets the penalty as well I don't think Harry will get suspended I think we'll see him next week but the Sharks um, look I think the Storm actually cruel their chances of winning this game yes, yes they were behind by one point in the 73rd minute but after that kickoff uh, after that, uh, sorry, after that field goal by Daniel Atkinson, the kickoff by the Storm, they went short for some reason, and 
Mulatalo caught the ball. He made a decent run up the middle of the field, beat some players, and then just offloaded it to Sifatalakai, and he just ran away and secured the game for the Sharks. So a little bit strange, I thought, from the Storm. I thought they would have gone long with still seven minutes to go. I thought they might have gone for a long kick and maybe potentially had the chance of going back to... 19 all with the Storm kicking a field goal themselves, but they didn't do that. The Storm, the Sharks got the try, and that's what secured the victory. So they sit on top of the NRL ladder at the moment. Now, today, Sunday, the first game was the Roosters versus the Warriors, and look, the Roosters, they've scored 138 points in three games. Not a bad effort at all. Now, there were some great tries in this game. It was 22-0 in the at halftime to the Roosters. Um, both sides, well, the Warriors certainly have been struggling, and this is their fifth loss in a row. Uh, so they have been struggling throughout this year. Sean Johnson... Did he go down with a pec injury or shoulder injury? Uh, He did have some sort of injury, so he more than likely will be out next week, Magic Round. And the other big news as well is Roger Chuovasek. He missed this game. He didn't play this game, but he'll be out for two to four weeks as well maybe longer as well with injuries. So big blow, two of their key players out of the Warriors' side. And, look, they are struggling. Um, They're certainly not the team that they were last year. They sit down in 14th position on seven points. They play the Panthers next week in Magic Round. So a big game for the Warriors next week against the Panthers. They'll, They'll need to get their season back on track and get that win but the roosters look they just had a great win dominic young he scored two tries sam walker he was outstanding again five out of seven conversions and look there was one for a try to daniel tupo in the 44th minute where sam has just kicked it over uh, probably 50 meters across field and um he just basically, uh, Daniel Tupo's caught it and just scored. It was unbelievable try that one. Angus Crichton, he's he got another double, or he got a double in this game, and he is really pushing his spot, his chances for a spot in the New South Wales Origin side, and he could potentially get one of those back row spots, if not a bench spot. He's been in Origin before. Um, So, look, the Roosters, they are slowly getting up the top of the ladder. They are having some big wins. They sit in fifth position on the ladder. They take on the Sharks next week. So that's going to be probably the game of magic round, I'd say, uh, between the fifth-place Roosters and the the top-of-the-table Sharks. And that is certainly a good game there to be witness. Obviously, maybe the Broncos and Manly, although without Tommy T in action, who knows what that sort of game will be. Uh, Look, Parramatta and the Storm. Um, Look, the Eels aren't travelling too well at the moment. So, look, this game between the Sharks and the Roosters next week at Magic Round, that could potentially be the game of the round. So... That will be an interesting one there. And congratulations to Jared Waria Hargreaves as well. 300 games as a rooster. Uh, he joins Anthony Minicello, Mitch Orbison, and Luke Rickardson, there we go. I got them, got them out there uh, as 300 game players for the Roosters. Now, if Jared plays another seven games I think it is for the Roosters he will become the most capped rooster in rugby league history so a fantastic effort there especially playing front row as well one of the one of if not the hardest position on the field uh, to play 300 games for one club is massive but to be the club 
record holder for games played is amazing as well. So, look, congratulations to Jared playing his 300th Rooster game. And, look, he will probably get that games played record for sure. The last game of the round was the Titans, who took on the Cowboys. Now, look, this game was 20-0 at halftime, and you thought the Titans were just going to go on and maybe put on a cricket score against the Cowboys, who have been struggling this year as well. They see themselves in 12th place on the ladder. Um, But to the Cowboys' credit, they came back late in the game. 60th minute, they got their first try through Jeremiah Nanai. He got a double. He got a try in the 74th minute. Kyle Felt got a try in the 77th minute. And look, the only difference in the game was a Brian Kelly penalty goal in the fourth minute of the match. And look, the Titans... They had a bit of a injury crisis throughout this game as well. I think they finished with um, one reserve in the game, and that was a second row or front rower who had to be thrown out in the centres or possibly even out in the wing uh, just through to their injuries. AG, a, AG, AJ Brimson, he went off with a groin injury. Kieran Foran went off with a hamstring injury. Um and look, two of their spine players going off there. Um, Harley Smith Shields also went off with a pec injury as well, which unfortunately for him will probably see him out for the season. Uh, a bit of a blow there for the Titans. So those three players off injured, um, not too good for the titans that's for sure but they held on and they got the victory david fafita he scored a try he's got his contract sorted for next year with the roosters signing a three four year deal with the roosters um so he got a try and that was from dummy half so it's a pretty good chance that if David Fafita goes into the dummy half close to the line, he's going to have a crack at scoring a try, and he did that this time, and he did. So um, the Titans, they held on for the win, 20 points to 18. The Titans, they still are down the bottom of the ladder on 16th position, um, but they have got a couple of wins in a row, so they are going all right at the moment, they hope those injuries aren't too bad uh, for Kieran Foran and definitely AJ Brimson as well because when he puts himself into the game, he's pretty dangerous. So he had a no try uh, where he got over the line but just couldn't get the ball down. So uh, the Titans will be sweating on their results and seeing how long they are out for. So hopefully... For them, not too long. They take on the Newcastle Knights next week at Magic Round. And the Canberra Raiders, they had the bye this week. Uh, So they move up to seventh position on the ladder. So uh, if you followed my tipping podcast, I only got five out of eight this week. But in terms of the ladder, after round 10 as it stands... It sees the the top eight sees it this way. The Sharks, the Panthers, the Storm, the Dolphins, the Roosters, Broncos, Raiders, and Sea Eagles. So the bottom eight, just out of the eight on 10 points, uh, the Bulldogs, Knights, and Dragons. The Cowboys in 12th on eight. The Eels in 13th on eight. The Warriors 14 on 14th spot on seven points. The Tigers in 15th on six. And the Titans on six. Uh, points as well in in 16th and unfortunately for you Rabbitohs fans you guys are in 17th spot on four points so look looking to next week it is going to be as I've said plenty of times throughout this podcast it is magic round so look there is some great games coming up 
and the buy for Magic Round, last year it was Newcastle, this year it is the Dragons, um, so no good for you Dragon supporters, you, but you get the week off so you'll be able to sit back, relax and enjoy the footy over the weekend. And look, there's some great games. It all kicks off Friday, 6 p.m., but stay tuned on. It'll either be Tuesday or Wednesday that I bring out the tipping podcast for that week, and I'll go through the games there. Uh, So stay tuned for that one. Stay tuned to the socials. Follow it on Instagram and Facebook, and you will know when it comes out. Look, thank you very much for listening to this. I hope this was enjoyable for you, Uh, just me and not the duck man tonight. But um, if this is something that you enjoyed listening to, please let me know, and I will endeavor to try and get these type of podcasts out for sure. Next week, I will be up at Magic Round. So it will not necessarily come out on the Sunday night. It will probably come out on the maybe the Monday night as Monday night uh, when I get back home as well. So looking forward to Magic Round, but more in that tipping podcast as well. So thank you very much for listening. I really appreciate it and share it with your family and friends. And look, enjoy your week and I will catch you later on in the week with a tipping podcast and also a interview based podcast and whatever else comes out as well there will also be a a game day review of the eels and broncos game so thank you very much for listening i really appreciate it and look enjoy your footy for listening to another episode of the Paracade Podcast. See you next time.